Hey, what's up, juniors? As you know, you'll be taking the CASP test real soon, so our goal here today is to help you prepare for the math section of that test. Now, the math section is made up of two parts. The first part is the Computer Adaptive Test, or CAT. No. These questions will cover topics ranging from Math 1 all the way through Math 3. While physical calculators are not allowed, for some of the questions, a built-in calculator tool will appear on your screen for you to use. The second part of the test is called the performance task, and that's what we're really going to focus on today. The performance task consists of a single prompt that describes a situation and then asks three to six questions about that prompt. Now, at least one of those questions will require you to explain your reasoning, and this is arguably the most important question when it comes to improving your score. So, what makes a great math explanation? Well, it should meet three success criteria. First, answer the question being asked by restating the question in your response. For example, if you're asked whether runner A or runner B will finish the race first, don't just write runner A. Instead, write runner A will finish the race first. Second, make sure you include units with your numbers. For example, rather than just writing three, Make sure to write three minutes, or three feet, or three narwhals. And finally, write out your mathematical thinking using complete sentences to explain how you arrived at your answer. For example, if you added numbers together and then divided that total, be sure to describe that process using a complete sentence. Now, in just a moment, you'll receive a handout containing a sample prompt. Teachers, Please pause the video so that you can distribute the handout, and then once everyone has a copy in front of them, go ahead and hit play again. So go ahead and pause now. Okay, juniors, it is so important that you first read the prompt carefully, and then try to figure out what the problem is even about. Don't even think about numbers yet. Just make sure you understand what's going on in this problem. I'm going to give you two minutes to read the prompt to yourself, stopping when you get to the launch question. After the two minutes is up, be prepared to discuss with the neighbor what this problem is about. Okay, are you ready? And go. Thirty seconds left. Okay, you now have one minute to turn to a neighbor and explain in your own words what this problem is all about. All right, have you found your neighbor? Okay, and discuss.
10 more seconds. So, hopefully now we all understand what's happening in this problem. So right below the picture of the candles, you'll see a launch question asking what will be the height of each candle after two hours. I'm going to give you one minute to figure out the answers and then write them on your paper. Ready? Go. Ten more seconds. Well, how did it go? If you said that candle type A will be 12 centimeters tall and candle type B will be 8 centimeters tall, then you're right. Great job. Now, you're about ready to start working on the explanation question. In just a moment, I'm going to give you three minutes to read the explanation question and work out the answer using the space in the section labeled, Do Math Here. Don't worry about writing sentences yet. This space is just your scratch paper. In fact, on the actual test, you will actually be using scratch paper to figure out these kinds of calculations. Okay, are you ready? Remember, you're going to read the explanation question and work out the answer mathematically. Okay, you've got three minutes. Go. Thirty seconds left.
Okay, finally, you're now ready to practice writing a high-quality explanation on your own. Remember that these are the success criteria that you should include in your explanation. Answer the question, use units, and explain your math using complete sentences. Okay, you've got four minutes to write your best explanation in that last box. Ready? And go! Thirty seconds left. All right, now that you've completed your explanation, let's quickly look at a few student samples of answers to this question. Here is student A's full response. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to read through this. Now, student A has all the math, but it lacks any sort of written explanation. And they never actually answered the question of whether both candles will still be burning after six hours. 
Okay, so now here's student B's response. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds again. Now, student B definitely answered the question, and they answered it correctly. But they didn't explain at all how they determined their answer or include any kinds of units related to the problem, such as hours or centimeters. So finally, let's look at student C's response. And I'm going to give you a little bit more time to read it, maybe about 30 seconds. Now, this response includes all three success criteria. They clearly answered the question, twice in fact. They described their mathematical process in detail using complete sentences and using units of measure. It's a longer explanation for sure, but because it includes all three success criteria, it will receive full credit. So now, take one more look at your written explanation. Is there anything that you could add or change to improve it? and to make sure that it includes all three success criteria? This is what we hope you'll think about when you tackle the performance task on this year's CASP test. Now, please save this handout from today so that you can review it prior to testing. Thanks so much for listening and participating today, and we wish you the best of luck.